Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on another Adobe Live. My name is Alana, I will be your host today. And we would like to invite you to join the Adobe Live community by subscribing to the Adobe Live YouTube channel and by following us at Adobe Live on Instagram for the latest streams, updates, and more. It is my sincere honor today to introduce today's guest who will be showing his amazing talents and sharing his process with us, the amazingly talented artist, Wade Acuff. Hi, Wade. Hey, Alana. Thanks for that uh, warm welcome. That was, uh, that was really, really well done. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to, to have you on the stream on, on a different side of the stream, usually nodding <laughs> for us that's, in the chat. That's so right. I, I love that support. And speaking of the chat, always want to, want to give a little love to the chat, to the people who are tuning in live. Hi, Umacorn. I see Voodoo Val. I see Frank. I see Rob. Hello, everyone. I told uh, I told Alana chat. This will be between us two. Uh, I told Alana that I wasn't going to have chat up, um, but I do have it up. So I'm going to sneak a peek every now and then. Don't tell yeah. Alana though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's between us. But please feel free to ask Wade any questions that you have for him while he's working. Send him some love as well while he's sharing with us. And Wade, I would love for you to just give us a little info about yourself, a little bit about you know what you're going to be working yeah. on today, and yeah, just start. Absolutely, with that. absolutely. Um, yeah, I uh, you might know me, uh, see me around the Adobe sphere. Uh, I, I usually mod, uh, but first and foremost, I am an illustrator, uh, an artist. Uh, I do work some work in film and video production as well. Um, I think Val might have some links uh, to share this Instagram. I'm just kind of scrolling through. There's a lot of things going on here. I have some uh, time lapse videos and you know just all sorts of things. But today we're going to be talking about lighting. So this might be an example: controlling your lighting, trying to uh, to get a little handle on how you might want to light and slash um, uh, organize. It's kind of an organization for describing where how the light's going to hit your subject that's what we're talking about but we're going to do it while doing one of my favorite pastimes of uh drawing fantasy portraits so that's that's what we're going to do today wow that's really exciting and i love that we get a little preview from your instagram make sure that you guys are following wade on instagram and across his social media channels the links will be in the chat but um wade take it away this is your show I, i'm excited. all right all right so uh, if you do know that I, uh, if you've seen any of my streams on Behance Arta, you know I always start with warm ups, and that's the plan today. We're going to do a warm up. We're going to do try to do a couple of warm ups, uh, and then we're going to let chat take over uh, as far as what we're going to proceed with. So we're going to do some sketches, choose a sketch, and then we'll do the lighting on that sketch, and then okay. in between, I'll, I'll we'll describe a little bit of how to control your lighting. But first, let's just start with some sketches. And yeah, we can uh, we can take some suggestions. I'm just going to keep I'm just going to start riffing. That's all. So I've got an empty layer here. Uh, this is a 17. What is it? What is it? Uh, let me just check real quick. Uh, 17 by 11 horizontal format, 300 DPI. This is kind okay. of my, my base. Um, and I keep things pretty loose. OK. Uh, OK, we're so, off to the races. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to be quick with the sketches because this is not the important thing. This okay. is not what we're what we're uh, here to do. I also have uh, some resource files uh, just just in case we need a backup. If my my nerves get to me too much and I can't sketch and we can't get anything that's worth uh, you know lighting, uh, I have provided some sketches for everybody. Uh, I think there's some links for that uh, that Val can post. Um, so we got Goblin uh, Val. We'll, we'll do a Goblin. Oh, that's Val, awesome. Val was first, so <laughs> yeah. Um, chat, make sure that you're you're uh, you're active. If you're tuning in live, Wade's going to be taking some suggestions, so you guys can have some input to what he's uh, what he's going to get into showing us today. And just to clarify, if people don't know, you're working in Photoshop, right? Yes, we're in Photoshop. This okay. is this is all Photoshop. Nice. Uh, very sketchy at the moment. I'm trying to get some of these nerves out, so I think we'll yeah. be okay. I think that's great. So you're starting, do you always start with warmups, Wade, when even when you're just doing? Yeah, yourself? absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, always a warm up um, just to, uh, you know, loosen things up. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a goblin. Maybe this is a, a troll. I don't know. It has tusks of some sort. Okay, I love this. Yeah, you're. Su I mean, you're such a, a master at, at fantasy characters and and these kinds of interesting character designs. Do you find yourself? Um, I guess your inspiration comes from maybe a fandom or what? It's all over the place. I, I've okay. I've been. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with um, uh, my dad read a lot of fantasy uh, and okay. had all these book covers that were, you know, wild and crazy with creatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that plays a part into it. Um, nice. <laughs> uh, I've always been a fan of, you know, uh, just letting your imagination run wild. Um, so that's part of this, maybe. I think that's great. Let's I think see. that's super cool. So we're gonna do a couple of these. Um, I'm gonna give this guy like a little mohawk or something. I don't know, something's going on. Yeah, it's like, even though you, you know, this you're, you're warming up, this is loose, I still feel like there's already so much character in just this little loose sketch. So I think warming up is a good tip that I should probably take with me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody gets their own, you know, uh, kind of figures out their own workflow. Um, and uh, this just kind of one of those things that like, if I'm ever kind of uh, doubting, you know, where I am on that day, mm -hmm. uh, a good warm up check, you know, just doing a warm up will let me kind of check. Oh yeah, things are things are going good. We're we're we can still do the thing that uh, I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, uh, I can still even on the days that I don't feel like it. Like maybe I'm kind of like, uh, eh, but I know I need to get the practice in. Yeah. As soon as I hit that warm up, I'm like, okay, yep, this is something that I can do. Wow, that's really nice to hear that, you know, no matter how far along, you know, you are in your career, just like you can still just sort of uh, have those days where it's like, all right, can I, oh, yeah. can I still do this? And you yeah, just I think, psych yourself up with a warm up, and that's nice. I've, I've, yeah, I think everybody, you know, regardless, goes through some kind of like, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of drain and then you're like, you know what, I, I know I can do it because I've done it before. Uh, and, you know, let's just get to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, Val said, uh, suddenly there's a goblin. Wade works so fast. <laughs> yeah, we're only a few minutes in and you already have like, I mean, <laughs> I'm not convinced that this is a warm up sketch. I'm like, uh, <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> You're too kind, but yeah, we're going to do another one real quick. Um, yeah, and if you noticed, I did flip this. Uh, if you ever want, to, uh, I, I highly recommend when you're drawing, sketching, doing anything, uh, flipping the canvas around. You can do this under view, uh, flip horizontal. And I have it set to a hotkey, which is all for me, it's alt or option control W. You can set it to what you want. Uh, so then I can just flip this, you know, as I need it. Um, to kind of check, it lets you check the balance. Like I can tell this is a little skewed. So I might would, uh, let's see. I might skew this a little bit by just doing a transform control T and maybe bring it back, you know, just make minor adjustments. Uh, I'm gonna drag this, you know what? I'm just gonna drag Very this in the cool. center and then I'm going to add a new layer. We'll call this first one goblin question mark oh we're naming the layers everyone Chat. oh yeah naming the oh layers. yeah <laughs> uh and let's see so we're not going to name this one until we know what it is we have other any other suggestions that came came through yeah i that mean I... i'm i'm not as fantasy sci-fi savvy i guess but voodoo val did say that she will also accept an orc not really sure what the difference is between an orc and a goblin the chat can <laughs> clarify that for me um, i don't i think i may have made an orc uh original i mean you know oh, I, interesting. <laughs> uh, that that's what the tusk the tusk kind of indicate usually indicate an orc uh de depends <laughs> depends okay um dale also said an oh. owl bear oh so an owl bear convenient um uh, dale is dale is actually my cousin uh and oh. I, think, I think his band may be called owl bear i'm not sure uh can verify uh what does an owl bear look like though so now i'm like lost <laughs> i'm like sure chat just just say anything i, I can do it i know i uh, love i love the participation in the, in the chat there's a lot of enthusiasm um <laughs> ryan suggested drawing an alien <laughs> Um, yeah, so, well, this is we're doing we're not doing sci fi portraits, okay, right? We got to keep we got to keep sorry. I'm sorry. Fantasy. But we could we could we could do that. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. Maybe we. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm kind of looking at reference to see what an owl bear looks like. The only issue with that, it may it may kind of cross over into the lighting. Uh, like oh. I, I've I've kind of planned to do humanoid for lighting, but you know okay. what? Uh, just because it's my cuz, I'll do a little owl bear on the side here. Okay, Dale. He's he's doing you this a kindness. This is just. This is for just. Family. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> And now I also will get to see what an owl bear would look like. <laughs> I mean, this is just going off of the quickest reference I could find. Hey, I think that's so. great. <laughs> and it's going to be super small, super, super small sketch. <laughs> I think that's a, uh, that's perfectly fine for everyone. Uh, it's always great to use references. <laughs> and, uh, Dale, I will be sending you an invoice for this. So <laughs> just be on the lookout for that. Oh, definitely. No, even though it's family, no freebies, right? Yeah, right. Freelance is not free. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right. I don't know what this is. This is supposed to be a beak. I'm not sure how this thing works. There we I go. I still love where this is going. <laughs> there. There's an owlbear. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's pretend that never happened. Uh, new layer, new layer officially. Here we go. All right, let's see <laughs> what we got here. Okay. Um, we have yeah. Oliver suggested a wood elf. Um, if that is on okay, the okay, we can we can do we can do an elf. We can try to do an elf here. Um, I don't know specifically what makes it wood. Okay. So I'm just going to draw an elf and then we'll see, see how that goes. Usually okay. they have kind of sharper features and you know, that sort of thing. Interesting. And are you using any like specific kind of brush for your warm ups? Um, yeah, no, actually we're going to go into brushes in a minute here. Uh, right now I'm just using a chalk brush. Oh, nice. uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but I've just have it dialed down pretty low that I use as a pencil uh, oh, okay. with, with some transfer, um, you know, capabilities on it just so it, uh, I can kind of use the pin pressure. Oh, okay. Nice. I'm just going to make, see if we can make this nose. I'm gonna make the nose a little bit sharper. I think. Okay. Maybe a, a bump, a little bump in the nose. Giving him a little, uh, giving it a little distinction. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I may give him a little bit of more of a chin. Get rid of that. Now we got a, we got a really. Let's see. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a bit severe. So we'll oh. give him kind of a pulled back, slick hair situation. Um, I'm gonna transform this slightly. Then I'm gonna flip it just to see it. Yeah, kind of like where it's going. Okay, so this is you doing your check, sort of seeing yeah. how those proportions are coming out. And Trying to get these eyes in a place that um, is not uh, super. A lot of times, eye placement will get a little weird when you're trying to be uh, really symmetrical. Oh, okay. Um, and of course, you could turn symmetry on if if that, but it wouldn't really work on a three quarter view head. So that's the that's the kind of caveat there. Yeah, I was thinking. I'm like, okay, with that. Uh... Yeah, with that pose specifically, it would be harder to do with the symmetry on. All right, <laughs> let's see. The chat is just firing off. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. really inspired everyone, I think, to come up with some ideas. <laughs> I, I'm looking at Val's. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's, look, if you want to go um, <laughs> for anybody that's going to be able to give some good prompts for fantasy stuff, Val, Val is... That's why it was one of the reasons I was super hyped that she was going to be the mod today. Oh, nice. So I was like, yes, I, it's, Val will not let me down. <laughs> Solid suggestions. Way to prove suggestions. These are great, everyone. Everyone's so creative. You guys should, I don't know, write some, write some of these things down. But, you know, That's bring right. these to life. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um... transforming a little bit mm -hmm. let's give this guy a little bit of a neck 
I know you had mentioned you were like thinking like maybe this character is you know kind of s severe in nature like do you sort of come up with um the character ideas like as you go and just sort of give them yeah. like personality approximate age and sort of like things yeah, to sort of help inform your drawings yeah exactly sometimes uh you know we get carried away like I, i'll do um uh, on my personal streams we you know it, i may start off as a warm-up but then I may be working on it for an hour as we come up with more story or, you know, whatever, whatever kind of happens. No, that's very cool. So just kind of, you know, have, when you have the time to do something like that, it's, it's always a lot of fun. Just yeah, that's awesome. All right. Um, this guy has a bit, giving a little bit more head. He didn't have quite a big enough head. Okay. Loving this ear. Yeah, we got one over there. Probably it probably would start to stick out over here, so we have a little bit of a, you know, see the other ear on the other side situation. Turn it down slightly. All right, so these are the co these are the two options currently. Uh, if we have time. Mm -hmm. We maybe can do another one later on, uh, but of these, let me put both of these together. Uh, not that one. <laughs> you go away. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna make sure you can see both of these. I'll scale them both down. Of these two, which one would you like to see the lighting techniques on? All right, chat. You have uh, been we have coming. an elf. Yeah, we have an elf and a goblin orc thing. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever yeah. this, whatever this is. Uh, and as you guys decide, if, if Val, if you want to make a straw poll, that'd be awesome. Yeah. It, uh, but we can do an A B if you want um, as well. Um, we'll we'll do that. We'll go ahead and make an A and a B. But if you want to do the straw poll, that would be awesome uh, because now I'm going to hop into the lighting part of this just to kind of um, give us some base, uh, a, a starting point from how, how to control your lighting. Uh, so I'm going to start a new layer and just to, uh, to kind of ground this in um, some place that most people that have uh, even just like taken an art class or anything will kind of understand what I'm maybe about to draw here. Um, oh, real quick, before we get into that, sorry, I kind of jumped the gun. If these are, uh, if the ones that we just drew are not what we want, I do have backup plan, which Way I have prepared. Yes, uh, we can choose any one of these, the lighting, the lighting part of it's going to take care of itself, it's going to be fine, no matter what. Um, but I did provide these for you guys, these I make warm. These are warm up sketches for my own stream. Um, I spent maybe a little bit more time on some of them just to clean them up. Uh, but if you if you look through them, there's just a handful of uh, different options. A lot of them have uh, gave them all names. So this one's called No Sudden Moves. This one's called Too Good for You. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> this one's called uh, Nerdy Topics Only. Uh, this one's How Dare. Uh, and uh, this again, and this is actually the one that I used in the demo for this um, for this stream. Uh, and then we've got, oh, what's over there? So these are all labeled. You can do what you want to with them if you want to post them uh, after you've done some lighting on them. That'd be great. If not, you know, they're, they're uh, free to use however you'd like. Uh, okay, awesome. back to the uh, the 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 lit sphere but i'm sure most of you are like really we're doing this on, on adobe live the highlights and yeah we're gonna do it and then i'm gonna show you a little bit of a um it's a, it's more of a technique or a way to practice controlling light and it's almost kind of a rendering uh, uh practice uh but before we jump into that i'm just going to uh talk about these brushes for a moment because I'm about to use them um, in a little bit of a different way. Uh, I just use this chalk brush, which I've also provided these brushes for you. These are all free brushes uh, that 
that they're not my brushes. I didn't make them, uh, but these are chalk brushes. And I just use this as a pencil most of the time, but if I need texture, I can bump it up to a larger size and then give my, you know, whatever I'm painting or drawing a little bit of a texture. Uh, and then the soft brush is a hard edge and soft edge brush. And I've started to call this a volume brush. Um, and you'll see why in a moment here. Uh, and there's also a, uh, let's see, there's also a smooth preset. Um, and I'll show you where that comes into play as well. It's basically an, another option for the uh, soft edge, hard edge brush. Uh, okay. So let's make this volume. So I'm gonna start call, start using this, this um, to create, oh, you know what? We have to have a light direction first. So let's back it up. Um, I like to, this is, this is the way I choose or the way I kind of work with controlling my light direction and figuring out and staying consistent with my lighting. Uh, I used to just draw a little arrow, you know, just a simple, like, Oh, the light's coming from this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I moved on to, well, that doesn't, that only gives me the flat 2d version of that. So then I started making cones because now I can control where that is in space. So instead of just drawing the arrow, now I can see that, oh, this is uh, out front from the, from the object and kind of shining here, um, as opposed to the flat may look like it's just shining there. Does that make sense? Oh, that's very, I, cause I'm, I've, just been the the regular 2d arrow kind of yeah, like, that, okay that, light direction that works there. that works mm -hmm. but like say you want to make this even more extreme you can draw a cone you know that's really out front and forgive my drawing uh cone <laughs> and arrows uh not quite super clean but you get the idea like mm -hmm. you're you're now positioning this in different ways. And if you wanted it to be backlit, it's the same thing, um, except now it's going back into space. So you kind of get that, you know, a um, little bit of a two, uh, 3D help for where the direction is. Um, so that's how we're controlling and referencing where the light is gonna hit our sphere. Uh, another thing, I don't use this very often uh, I used it early, early on just because I wanted to make sure um, I knew how to, uh, so that I could always reference where my light's coming from. Uh, and I'll, I'll show it to you real quick. It's uh, really, really kind of silly when you think about it, but very simple. I'm just going to make a bunch of lines, ignore the sphere in the back. We're not using that for anything. Okay. Uh, and then I will just make little arrows. You might know where this is going. I don't know. Uh, and then now that we have this all in one layer, uh, say I want to match my arrow here. Um, I'm gonna make another layer, a copy of that just to make sure. Uh, I can now transform it, but not just transform it flat. I can now also give it some uh, direction. So light is coming from the front, top, mm. right. So now I can see where my light is hitting uh, or, you know, the, the direction that this is going. I don't use this anymore. Uh, this was something I used to do quite a bit. Uh, well, not quite a bit. I, I kind of used it once or twice until I got the idea, uh, you know, that, oh, I don't, you know, I can, I can do this with a cone and it works just fine. But that's just yeah. kind of like, it's more like a, it's kind of like the, um, uh, the reversing the canvas. It's just a, a hint uh, to, to remind yourself where your light is coming from. Uh, but for this and the rest of the day, we're just going to use the, the cone. Okay. I feel like, I mean, you've already just dropped like so much value <laughs> and just like Wade's pulling out all the stops uh, for everyone chat. So uh, be sure to uh, be paying attention, but also, I mean, it's great because we can just watch the replays over and over and yeah. uh, get the value uh, again and again. So that's awesome. All right, so uh, now we are going to jump to the lighting and uh, we're just going to light the sphere real quick. And then okay. I want to show you a little bit of a technique uh, that um, it's like I said, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute. Um, but let's just do this real quick. If the light's coming from the front, top right, uh, it's probably going to be hitting here. This is this is kind of where we are, right? Uh, 
Yeah. Um, so this is, let's say this is our light and then there's going to be all the fall off. Uh, and then, um, I'll just paint the shadows and you can look this up, easily find reference for this, uh, just by looking up, you know, light sphere or something on Google, you can find this easily. Uh, like I said, this is not, you know, another, oh, look, this guy can light a sphere, you know, uh, that I didn't, get, I never got a lot of the, out of those, except for the first, you know, the first time you ever see it, you're like, oh, okay, cool. I know the definitions. I know the explanation for things. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of makes sense. Uh, cool. Uh, but then from there, you know, I, I have not, I've not used this often at all. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but I think it's good for beginners. And it also, it's, yeah. there might be something about the way that you're presenting it now that might be helpful for someone. Sure, so. sure. Absolutely. Uh, and I hope this next little segment is going to do that. Uh, also, you'll notice it's not a perfect sphere. I, I don't I don't really deal with perfection what, what oh, people consider that. perfection very well. Um, I like to keep things loose. Now I will tighten it up if it's, you know, for an illustration or something like, but when I'm just working, I'm way more concerned with where it's going uh, than I am like any minor details. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're gonna call this, you know, relatively front lit, sure. Uh, maybe there's even like, you can see, the lighting on the ground that's kind of given us this bounce light which is this kind of under lit area um this this area right here would be the bounce and this is your core and like i said you can look this up and you can find all the the definitions and all that sort of thing um but what i want to do and i think i may actually flip this just because let's see can i do it you know what i'll flip it this way and we'll work we'll work with this reverse screen uh now I'm going to show you, oh, this is just kind of the base. We know, um, you know what, let's do, before we move on, let's do one more. I'm going to hide this. Uh, I did not paint on the correct layer. Oh, So okay. now I have to redraw this sphere. That's just fine. It's okay. Well, it's okay because we that gives people a little bit more time to put in any last minute votes that they, you know, need oh, to yeah. put in because we still need that. So it's totally fine. We've got time. Cool, right. cool. And there's our very imperfect sphere, a little blob here. Like uh, and let's uh, let's do something that's more like, you know what, let's do almost the exact opposite of that. Let's do something from the top, sort of the top left now. And it's the same situation. You really just think about, try to think about these things in 3D space. And the easiest way to do that and, uh, is to take a ball uh, or you know a tennis ball any kind of round object and shine a light on it and then you have your own little still life uh the the bonus to that or not the bonus but the kind of way to upgrade that is pick an object that is sort of spherical uh -huh. that has spheres <laughs> and things in it like this little duck yeah uh, it's just like <laughs> multiple spheres that make up other shapes shine the same light on it and see yeah. how that works uh, under the same lighting conditions um, That's a great tip. Hey, everyone, grab your own, uh, grab your own little objects and create your own references uh, in real time for yourself. That's a great way to. <laughs> what better way to render something three dimensionally than to have the actual object right there sitting with you? <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Kind of changing this around a little bit. I still had it reversed, so I want to just. Oh right. This. All right. All right, that's going to change. Just go ahead and add our light in here real quick. And I'll start working on these shadows. Uh, you'll see me um, erasing with the same brush. Um, I know some of you won't have this option based on your keyboard type, uh, but the tilde key allows you to use your the brush you're currently using uh, as uh, an eraser. So uh, it helps me. I just keep my finger on it all the time. Uh, and then I can just press down, start erasing, and then take it off and start drawing or painting. Oh, that's great. That's a nice little, I, I guess it's sort of just even, aside from, I guess, maybe the benefits to the drawing, maybe keeping that sort of same texture and effect from the same brush, it also yeah. might speed up your workflow a bit too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I definitely, you know, would constantly be pressing the erase, uh, you know, over to E and then back to you know the brush. Uh, but now I just kind of hover over that tilde key and nice. then get it going. Okay, so 
I mentioned I gave you all also a, uh, a smoothing preset. Well, now we're going to use it because um, if I, I could do the same thing, I'm going to choose uh, I'm going to choose a hard round brush. And this is kind of why this is one of the reasons I wanted to make sure that I included this preset. Um, so this is just a hard round, but I've been using this volume brush, what I'm calling volume brush uh, with that preset. If you don't have that brush, you can just uh, use the smooth tool and create the same similar hard edge, soft edge that that brush provides on its own. Very cool. Um, uh, warning, which is what we're experiencing right now. The preset is, uh, it, you can see the strength is very low, uh, but it will also um, can possibly wreck your system, which is looks like what's happening. Oh no. Uh, okay. Think, Proceed with okay. caution, everyone. Yeah, I think we're okay. I think okay. we're okay. All right. <laughs> Ooh, so okay. you can, you can see like the similarities in the mark. So that's, right. You know, so instead of having to use a hard round and do that, that's the reason I use this brush. Okay. Um, all right. So we have our lighting. Never everything's set up. Um, what do we, oh, yeah, we didn't do, we don't need the shadow. It would cast a shadow. There you go. That's there. That, there's the explanation for that. Uh, <laughs> because I want to get, I want to get to this next technique. Um, okay. And I know I mentioned, oh, we don't want perfect sphere, but you know what? I'm going to grab our marquee tool, actually, I'm gonna do it with the sphere, um, not sphere, the circle marquee tool. Okay. Uh, uh oh. Okay, sorry, there was a little glitch. Oh, All no, right, back, back to the marquee tool. Uh, and I'm just holding, I guess I'm holding Alt and Shift to make, uh, make it stay round while it scales out. And then I'm gonna select the layer uh, control inverse so that, uh, selects the outside of that and delete. So now we have this more, more perfect sphere. Uh, I'm going to hit and while this is selected, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer, drag that layer underneath, uh, control shift I controller command shift I again to invert shift F five to fill. Uh, and I do want to fill it with the, it'll fill it with the background color. Click OK. And then I'm just going to merge these two because right now this was just the transparency that we're uh -huh. seeing and the gray background, which I also work on a gray background so that I can push and pull the light. Uh, so if I want to hit it with a highlight, it will actually show up. If I work on a white canvas, it wouldn't look the same. Okay. Um, so that's the reason for the slightly gray background. All right, merging these two down so that now you can see it's a solid shape. Uh, okay. And then from there, I'm just I'm just going to add. Uh, let's see, add a new layer, but I, I do want to crush this down quite a bit. Click OK. I'm going to just make flood the background with a color uh, that's somewhere in here. I think. Let's see. Oh, it's still selected. <laughs> Sorry. All right, new background. I could have done this with a um, in a different way, but. We're doing it this way. <laughs> no, okay. It's okay. Here That's we awesome. go. All right. So I'm going to smooth this out using this preset and I'm going to go into a little bit of a technique that um, I'm not sure where I saw it the first time, but I've seen it multiple times and uh, something that early on I was like, oh yeah, this is going to work. Um, just so I'm not drawing off the edge, I'm going to go ahead and make a mask for this. Oh, um, let's see. And then I want to make sure that this is working. So for anyone who's just joining us in the okay. chat, I see some people saying they joined in late, but thank you so much for popping in live. Wade Acuff, we are here with him and he is showing us some lighting techniques that he is going to be applying to some war to a warm up portrait that he did earlier, but he's showing us some things on some spheres that he quickly drew. So we're, we're following that's, him. He's just made a mask in Photoshop. So we're here for right. it. That's right. So we have our, just uh, for those coming in, I'll go ahead and redraw the cone. We have kind of our light angle uh, coming from this direction. Um, and we don't have to have the little stem for the cone, but you know, 
you can just draw a cone. But either way, here we go. We've got our little uh, arrow. This is where the light's coming from, sort of front, sort of top. Um, so now the volume brush, um, I'm gonna go over a couple of things. So we have a sphere, let's say it's perfect. Let's say it's perfectly round, no lumps, no anything. Uh, it looks a little lumpy right now, but we're gonna make it even more lumpy. Uh, so start thinking about this as a surface that you're gonna push and pull like clay. Uh, and just you know, find a place to add a highlight. It can be anywhere. Then go and sample a shadow color or shadow um, value and drop that in the same direction that the, or the opposite direction of the light. And you're starting to build a shape. There's a little lump on this thing now. Okay, well, that was simple enough. Well, let's say we raise the lump, uh, really add a highlight. And you're following, you're all following this direction. Like this is the direction of it. So maybe it's large enough that it starts to cast a shadow. And you're starting to make these little shapes. I know this seems very um, like, okay, well, you've done a thing, cool. Um, <laughs> but you can start to kind of massage this into um, a curve or a crease. Well, let's add a little bit um, of a highlight on one side of this, this curve, this raised area. And then uh, picking the shadow as you go back along the curve, the darker, the further you are away from the light, the darker the shadow will be. And the lighter the highlight will be. So if anybody, uh, I don't know if this is starting to look like anything to anybody, but if anybody that's messed around with 3D and sculpting, they might start to see that, oh, this is kind of like when you start pushing and pulling or sculpting with a brush on a sphere in a 3D program. Uh, and that's kind of the idea. That's pretty awesome. But then you want to take that to the next step uh, and say, well, let's make it taking our more extreme example here where the shadow kind of casts along the curve. Well, let's 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 just draw the shape we want to have. Just kind of sketch it in and say, well, this part's going to be in shadow. Well, so is this part mostly we can add our highlight over here and then that would be a little bit of a highlight kind of blend this out i'm not sure how much we want that but we're just following the light the rules of the lighting you've already set up for yourself right lights coming from the top left well these things are in shadow well they're probably high enough off of the surface to start to cast a shadow and just following the curvature of this sphere we start to get something that kind of looks like a nose. And all we've done is to draw on three kind of lumps that we have followed the same lighting rules. Yeah. Uh, and that's all that we've done to make this kind of nose shape. Now I'm not convinced that we're not in Photoshop. <laughs> it's this whole sculpting thing. I mean, it's, I, I mean, that's crazy. That's so cool. Val said it looks like you're sculpting in ZBrush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the that's kind of the idea. It, like it, you're um, a lot of those have kind of built in. A lot of those 3D softwares have the built in, you know, default lighting, uh, and they follow the same rules that we're following here. Right. Uh, you know, you're just making uh, the shapes and things as you go. This is a little bit of a, a little what weird nose, but you know, I hope you get the idea. Um, oh, I think that's but great. It's, it's just the buildup and the creation of like small little things. Like I, I used to do this just for fun and practice. Like I, I would come in here and you can really like make these creases deeper. Um, you can make them kind of flow around different shapes. And I'm just working with the shadow side first. Okay. And then you come back in with the highlight side and you're like, oh, okay, well that's starting to, you know, it still kind of looks like a thing. Um, and the same thing works on the other side, um, but if you have a bounced light, like, so let's go ahead and increase this bounce light. Oops, sorry about that. Let's increase this, uh, we got a little light down here. Let's increase this a little bit. The shadows are going to do the exact same thing in the opposite direction. 
uh, and the way this brush works, and just to point it out, it does have a soft edge and a hard edge, and it changes direction with the stroke. So you just reverse the stroke on the brush so that you start to find, you know, where that lands, where those uh, highlights would land going the opposite direction. That's awesome. So you're starting to... Yeah. Go ahead. This is from that brush pack that you've... Um, yeah, that this you is just... Everyone. Yeah, from the brushes I included. Nice. Um, so it's real. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time working this way, just just making. Uh, I didn't coin the term, but uh, meat meat folds was a thing that someone said. Oh, you're really good at doing that. And I just said, sure, awesome. Sure, let's go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your That's your awesome. words, your words, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so amazing. Marsh in the chat said, "Lighting is so important, and in composites too." I'm gonna draw that cone of light in every file. So we're taking these, uh, nice, these nice. tips. Absolutely. Uh, with us. Yeah, this is none of this is mine. This is just things I've picked up along the way. Um and yeah, this is probably I mean, I start to get lost into it. It's like, oh, this will probably be darker. I probably need to make so I need to stop now or I will okay. just work on this the entire time. No, but, that's great. We do have a winner in the poll, so that's great. Oh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh so we're gonna take this uh part of this. Mm -hmm. and apply it to what we're doing next uh, with okay. lighting these uh, fantasy portraits. All right, I'm going to tuck all this stuff away to its own little <laughs> folder. Mm -hmm. That is really awesome. Get rid of that. So what, what was the winner? Did we have a winner? Because now... Oh, yeah, the, the official winner, according yeah. to Val, is the Goblin Orc has won the poll, so... Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm going to spend a minute because, you know, I'm shocked now what it looks like because I've been away from it for a few minutes. We can do better. We can do better. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on cleaning it up because I do want to do a couple of uh, lighting scenarios. Okay. But I'm just going to add some, some darker values here and there to kind of push push this into a, something, may, hopefully a little a more pleasing direction. No, that's great. I mean, you could uh, do those little quick tweaks. I would love to just remind everyone in the chat that if you would like to nominate yourself or someone that you know to be a guest on Adobe Live, that you can submit your recommendations for creatives in the tab on Behance. So you could be the next artist in Wade's spot. So if you love uh, the thought of sharing your process with our community, go ahead and, and put in those submissions because uh, Adobe Live is nothing without the community. So absolutely thank you guys so i'm loving where this is going yeah. yeah so yeah i'm just sort of doing a little bit of a cleanup nothing wild i'm just darkening some of the uh, i can see how how loose it was which i like i like being loose at the beginning no, uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tighten it up too much but just add a little bit uh, a little bit more structure so that there's maybe more to uh, information to use for lighting um oh, okay to that that's great. Uh, and maybe this was uh, maybe this guy has a little bit of a this is a shave. He's got like a shave. Oh, okay, a little buzz uh, cut. Yeah, a little undershave or something. Nice. Not quite under, but you know. <laughs> I'm digging the mohawk look. It's cool. So maybe he's got a little little, little tail. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> All right. Um what do I need to do next? Okay, so uh, taking what we've been talking about, I'm going to get rid of this A over here. Um, taking what we've been talking about and applying it to this. I may make corrections to this drawing as we go. Just fair warning oh, as nice. I see things to change. But we are going to talk about lighting here. So um, I, I know I'm, I'm picking on this drawing. Come on, yeah, drawing. I think it's cool that you keep it fluid and you, you're you not afraid to just sort of revise and just keep going as you go along. That's great. All right. So, okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, that's a good point, actually. And I, I do say this quite often um, when I'm streaming. Uh, if, if you find something that's worth changing, no matter... Digital, yes, it makes it a little bit easier, but it's worth changing if you find it. Don't just leave something because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to go back to it or, you know, uh, you know, there's some, there's obviously you have to call something done because 
as artists, we will work on something forever uh, sometimes. So I get that part of it too. But if it's something that's really bothering you, you're going to feel a lot better that you went and changed it than just left it. I promise you. I agree. I think that's a, a great uh, piece of advice. So I'm just going to name this cone. Okay, we're going to drop our cone in here and I'm going to do a light very similar to what we've been doing uh, with the sphere because we're going to treat this entire head just like the sphere. Awesome. Um, so much so that I think I'm going to, yeah, let's do it this way. I'm going to use a lasso tool. Uh, let's talk about the lasso tool for a second. I don't use this a lot uh, for this for lighting specifically, but I will show you one technique that is kind of fun. Uh, but just in case those don't know uh, about the lasso tool, there are different ways to use it, and they're all right up here at top. Um, you have a, uh, I think I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm going to let it hover. We have add to selection, but uh, we have new selection, which when you make a selection and you make a new selection, the old selection goes away. Uh, when you have the add to selection, we have our current selection. And then as you add, you add more to it. Uh, and then you have the uh, reverse of that where you can start taking away from your selection. And then you have, I'm going to get rid of all of these selections and make a selection. And then you have intersect, which only keeps the part that the two uh, selections meet. So you can see how that kind of went from there to there. Okay. Uh, I only mentioned that because uh, I'm going to work in this add additive, the add selection way, okay. um, because I'm just going to grab pieces of this and just let the lasso tool do its work. And I'm basically just making that like I did with the sphere before, uh, where I'm just going to make a, a gray background layer um, that's the same color as the background, just so that there's a solid color behind the portrait. OK. And if you had the line completely filled in, you could do like a selection tool to use you know that but this line is clearly not filled in all the way yeah. uh, and it'd be just it's quicker just to do it this way all right so i think we have it i'm going to fill this layer um color should be the same yeah uh no it's not okay 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 uh, so now you can see that we filled over the top of that i'm going to uh, grab actually i'm just going to grab the goblin layer and make a copy by holding alt or option and dragging above the current layer uh, and then I'm going to merge these two no you know what maybe I won't I'm just going to call this fill layer okay uh, uh, let's see I'm going to hide that hide the first sketch all right so now um let's see what do I want to talk about first we could do let's since we were just talking about the lasso tool yeah uh let me add a new layer I'm going to call this lasso shadow or something uh, and then we're thinking about, uh, well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So let me okay. not, let me not do that. Um, so we want to think about this like a sphere, just like we've done with everything else. The super easy way to kind of do this is use our good friend, the gradient tool on the radial gradient. Uh, make sure that you have a light and a darker side. Uh, and the lighter being the middle point. Think about where this would land on the sphere, AKA your head, and then draw out your, radi uh, your radial gradient um, and you'll start to get a start. Now this is very bright. Yes. So you may wanna drag out that point a little bit further. And this is a good start if you wanna work this way. I'll, I'll leave it this way for now. This is not how I work, but I have you know done this for various things, real quick things in the past. Um, so it's a good, good, good way to know, uh, you know, a good thing to know. So you can maybe start on something quickly. Uh, I'm just gonna make a new layer and call, uh, nope, already had that layer. It's called yeah, lasso awesome. shadow. Okay, <laughs> so now we're thinking about where the, just like we did with the other, sort of like we did with the other sphere, where are the lumps and raised places that it's causing shadows? Um, so let's start with the spherical nose here. Uh, and I'm just going to imagine this being a sphere and it's probably going to cast a little bit of a shadow, something like that. 
Uh, and then let's let's go ahead and fill that in. I'm just going to paint it in with our shadow. Um, and let's see what it looks like. And I'm going to hide this with Control or Command H. And look, you start to get a shadow. Just like that. Yeah, and then I'm using. Uh, let me turn this back on. You can hide your last or your marquee tools by our selections by Control or Command H. And so I'll do that just to hide it, just so it doesn't distract me from what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, but if I want to continue that, I think this might be in shadow. Maybe this area over here. Absolutely, all of this. And I'm just following where that cheek. Uh, plane of the face uh, would still be facing the light uh, and if it's wrong it's so easy to fix so who cares right you know like, I love that <laughs> yeah so let's see let's say that's what we're looking for I'm going to hide everything and then I'm going to kind of fill it in I'm I'm and, just loving all these uh, hot keys and and uh quick actions that you're doing. That <laughs> well, that, that is important is you want to work on your how, how fast you are because you know, I'm, I'm pretty slow when it comes to like, uh, like I want to be able to do iterations fast. So that mm -hmm. having that kind of helps. Uh, but there you can add and you can I could have made a mask, I should have made a mask on that to, to block all of that. But this is still just the selection we selected. And that's it. That that's all we had to do to, to make this this lighting. Uh, and it's really cool. It's pretty crisp. Uh, it's not my favorite way to work, which we'll do uh, right now, which is basically just painting in the light. Okay. Um, but let's uh, let's get rid of all of that. I'm just going to put it down here. And essentially starting from scratch, but let's change the lighting direction. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't think we need, let's see, is that not on this layer? Oh, cones down here. Okay. <laughs> see, you should name every layer, not just the ones you're working on. Name your layers, everyone. That's right. <laughs> All right. So let's do, um, let's do some kind of, hmm. Let's do like a, an up light almost. And we'll do we'll do a front front up light. Okay. And you know what? We just we can just do the cone. That's all you really need. I just add the stem a lot of times to really give that uh, you know how much depth, you know, how if you really want to say it's facing you more, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of helps sometimes, but that's the idea. Nice. Not perfect, but you know, nothing about this is right now, uh, but we're going to use that to start with. Uh, and then I will just jump in here, start a new layer and uh, real simple, the same way we just did everything. I went ahead and selected our shape. I'm going to hide it while I work and I like to build up the lighting. That's the way I like to work. Uh, the lasso tool is just a real quick, uh, the way we just did it, it's a real quick way to kind of get there. Um, I like to spend a little time. If you've already taken all this time to effort, uh, time and effort to draw the, you know, your, your beautiful portrait. Now spend a little time with it and figure out where, um, you know, where the light's hitting it and, you know, it, it get a little, get a little more familiar with it as you go. And so I'm just kind of painting with this volume brush, uh, probably drop this a little darker and also working on a, uh, sh this is, you'll notice the light quality was, is a little, comes off a little softer in right. this method. Like it's uh -huh. immediately a lot softer. Um, doesn't have to be cause you could just work the other with the, um, the hard edge. Mm -hmm. It's, it really depends on how you like to, uh, which way you like to uh, use the brush uh, stroke, like I said, because, you know, it has the soft edge and, and the hard edge. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to have that, to have both options. So yes, yes. Sort of make that and, determination for yourself. Yeah. And uh, I definitely want to keep part of this ear lit because that's kind of creeping out around 
this uh, you know the side of the face. So it's it's a uh, you're working with what's called a self shadow here, this this whole area, um, because it's shading as the light's falling off of it, and then you have the cast shadow on the ear from the face. Oh, okay. Not that any of that matters. That's just terminology for describing things. Oh, I, mean, I think that's that's that can definitely be helpful and you know and anyone catching replays and uh, do a oh, little sure. google search and uh it's just like what is the actual name of this thing that i'm looking at mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome let me give it a little bit of uh shadow on top of this brow as well it's gonna look a little weird um so how long did you um, or I guess what was the process of you finding that preference of you figuring out, like, I prefer to paint in my, my lighting and my shadows as opposed to the previous method that you showed us with the gradient tool, which was like a little bit faster, I guess, but. Um, it really just has to, had to do with, uh, what kind of nuance I'm going for. Like if I have to, if I have to describe, like if I'm doing a storyboard or something like that, I'm lassoing all day long. I'm doing the okay. quickest possible result. But if I'm going for something that I'm trying to, um, you know, this is going to be part of, you know, this is what I would consider, you know, um, a finished piece of art or, you know, something along those lines. Okay. Uh, I'm going to want to take my time a little bit more. Um, it, it really is about what the end results for you you know, like what you want those end results to be. Um, because there's, you could do selection. I mean, people make art all the time with just, you know, lasso type tools. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just, that's, this is the process I enjoy a little bit more. Um, and that's probably all it really comes down to is like, I really enjoy getting my, you know, hands dirty, uh, digitally, um, uh, <laughs> and, and figuring out the, the ins and outs of shading and that sort of thing. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's really helpful. I mean, already you've shown us so many different um, techniques and methods earlier with the sphere and now applying it to the uh, to the goblin portrait. But I, I think it's just nice knowing it's like, oh, there's more than one way to do it. And however you find joy in a method, like stick with that, like that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's always things like when does the client need it? <laughs> oh yeah you yeah, know but we're not talking about that right now um <laughs> uh now i will i will i just want to mention I do, I do sometimes shift over to a lot of times i use this chalk brush for everything um i just happen to be using the volume brush uh but the chalk brush will let you get you know sharper details and that sort of thing um, awesome. um we have a question in the chat from absolutely. marcia um they ask is gray your go-to in underpainting do you ever use burnt sienna or other earth colors um i i rarely when i'm working on especially at this stage mm -hmm. it's typically going to be value only um then when i switch to color and if we have time uh, uh, the last five minutes or so i'll show you how i use gradient maps to start that coloring process okay. um but uh, yeah, normally there's uh, the reason I have for the, the gray uh, is really just this, this purpose you're seeing right now. I can push this to a lighter value and I can also make it a darker value. If this background were completely white, I would have to really uh, you know, either paint in around the area to really sell that that's a light. Um, and I don't have to do it. Isn't, it allows me to push and pull as opposed to only add dark shades. Mm. I don't know if that answers the question. I hope, Marsha, that does answer the question. If not, let me know. No, oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah, Val also has an interesting question in the chat, okay. and I'm actually curious to know about as well. So can we talk a little bit about material too? Sometimes when you find a brush you like, it's easy to accidentally render everything as if it's made of the same material. Uh, Val, can you clarify? Do you mean like um, uh, material of the object you're painting? Is that what you're talking about? Because that's, uh, I, yeah, let me clarify on that. And then I can address that a little bit. Yeah, then we can circle back. Yeah. 
But this is looking great. I mean, I'm I'm loving this process so far. I know everyone in the chat is is very much enjoying this, and anyone who's anyone who's catching the replays definitely getting a lot of value out of watching your process, Wade. So this has been awesome okay. so far. Still got a little bit of time left. Not like maybe around like 25 minutes left. So yeah. Um, and what I want to do is we've done we've done this in two scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about a little bit about uh, we can either do another use the other sketch or make a new sketch and you know work on that or use one of the ones that uh, I provided you guys we can work on one of those mm -hmm. uh, I'm giving a lot of options I know it's hard to uh, to, to clarify <laughs> these um, but yeah I just want to make sure uh, that everybody's kind of getting this I want to get back to what Val's uh, question was okay seems like she's added some clarification oh um yeah i thought i thought that's what you were talking about i understand what you're saying val i th i think I, I get the whole grasp on uh where you're coming from that um to me it's more about how you're using the brush because i could use um i don't know it, it is a it is a I, when you're trying to um let me I'll deselect this when you're trying to make something appear shiny and I'm going to use our little sphere guy again. You know, uh, you can do it with just about any brush. It's really about how that the the material reacts to light. So if I add, um, let's see, is this going to work for me? If I add a really sharp, why is it not? Oh. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um, I'm not sure why. Okay, if I had a really sharp highlight. That's going to indicate this is probably a shiny material. If I make a softer highlight and kind of get rid of that sh that sharpness, this is now like a ping pong ball material. Um, the brush doesn't. I I, I kind of get what you're saying, and that's why I do have the chalk brush because if I want this to appear more textured then I will uh, kind of stagger the edge of this uh, core shadow because um, color will also play a little bit into this. But now I can make this look more like granite or stone based off of the texture. I think, and then of course, you know, you could add, oh, sorry about that. You could add little pits in here. And now you're just talking about how you render things to look like, uh, you know, a certain material. And it's all from the chalk brush. I could have done the same thing with the soft brush, but it wouldn't have given me that texture. So yeah, sometimes finding that, you know, the really, uh, it would take me a lot, a lot more work to make it look textured with the softer brush. Um, I hope that helps, uh, you know, also the shine of your material plays a big part of it. Like skin can be really shiny and oily in places. Mm -hmm. uh and then not so much in others you can have you know drier areas uh and i talk about that quite a bit with things like the ears if you add just a little bit and it's not it's gonna be a little harder to see on this but if you add just a little bit of a waxy texture it starts to sell that oh yeah that that ear is made of something slightly different uh -huh. uh, you know some thinner skin like around the nose that sort of thing uh really starts to get a little bit more shine that was like really great and I, I felt I got I feel like I got a lot from that from Val asking the question in the way that yeah, you that was a great question that that was really great um all right let's um you know what we can do we can uh let's take one of the ones we have for practice okay um, awesome Mainly because I'm not a big fan of the other sketch that I made. So hey, let's do hey, it's the, the beauty that. of having these. That's right. Them. And this guy's oh. so so derpy. I kind of want to. I love them. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, oh. All right. So I'm just going to work from this file. Yes. And um, let's do multiple lights with this guy. Oh, nice. OK, taking it a step further. Love it. Yeah. Uh, and again, let's choose something simple, uh, you know, relatively. 
I'm going to go ahead with the down, kind of a down light. Which has sort of been the go-to today. I kind of wanted, I mean, the other one was a little up, but not, yeah, not extreme. Because extreme lighting isn't a whole other thing. And we're not really talking about uh, mood lighting, because you can definitely use all of these techniques and ways to make this, you know, really heighten the mood of the image. Right. Uh, right now we're just talking about controlling it enough that you can make those choices so that you can make the mood lighting that you want to do. All right, so we've got a cone here and I'm going to do kind of a backlight. Um, okay. And not to confuse us, I'm going to leave, we're going to address that later. I'm going to call this key light. And then I'll make a new layer just so I'm not destroying that. And I'm going to make a selection real quick. Still have this on the continuous selection or the additive. So that should just be able to grab this in chunks. Um, if you do like working with the lasso tool, uh, and this, I don't know why, I, I mean, I'm just giving a plug here for Kyle T. Webster because man, uh, all his brushes and all the stuff is great, but he also has a gum road where he has a plug-in for one of his, uh, it's basically like a lasso, almost a lasso coloring tool. Like as you make selections, it will fill it in for you. It's oh, pretty amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, Kyle's brushes are legendary, so. <laughs> for sure, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I've never, uh, really played with the different kinds of things that you can do with the lasso tool. I think I've just been a single selection kind of person all this time. So my eyes have been open to the, power <laughs> of the lasso tool and what it can really do. So that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. So, um, that's, I don't use it a lot as far as like the shading thing, but I use lasso tool all the time for everything else. Just about, yeah. um, let's see. All right, I have our background selected. Okay, I'm gonna hide our marquee, or I could just make a mask. All of these methods work. There's so many ways to do the same thing. Yeah, no, okay. I think it's good. Uh, selecting the soft brush. Uh, I'm just gonna treat this like a sphere again. I think I know where the light's hitting. And I'm gonna slowly work this up. Um, and you might start thinking about like, well, what if the hair is dark? Well, it's the same thing. Same thing applies. You're still going to have a shadow on it. Don't treat it. Don't, uh, I would, I would say caution with coloring it in first. Uh, if you have issues with knowing where your light's coming from, uh, because it's going to determine, you know, where the cast shadows are and that sort of thing. But if you went ahead and just blocked this out, uh, which we may wind up doing, it may not let you know the form of the shape. Does that make sense? So I kind of treat everything some semi the same uh, as if it were all kind of like a matte gray and I'm just painting the light part of it. Um, okay. That's awesome. That's a great tip. And I'm just going to work this in here. I'm going to be a little bit more nuanced because this guy clearly has um, <laughs> uh, lots of, uh, you know, uh, character. We'll call it character. I mean, he looks awesome. I mean, <laughs> I, I think of Val in, in the chat earlier said that you were a master of expression. So I, oh, I, I, I think I'm, I'm working on it, but great. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And I'm just using this brush, you know, just basically like we did with the little blob sphere, just making little decisions, um, you know, this is essentially making those wrinkles we were talking about earlier, yeah. uh, just in much broader ways, um, you know, but, but following the lines and contours that we've painted on the face. Right. I think, I think maybe we would even see the tip of this ear. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see. I'll have to see how it plays off, plays out. Because um, it's not super harsh downward light. And again, just thinking about this like a sphere, it's really, that's what it comes down to all the time. Even the little bits and pieces, the planes of the face. I mean, there's a lot more to, that we could go into, but I'm just trying to get the basics uh, down for this. So now we can start adding, actually adding light. 
So we'll move our color up to the lighter areas. Um, I think this is probably, yeah, something like this. And you can be just as broad with this too when you start, if you want, just kind of deciding where all this light, I probably should do this on a separate layer. Uh -huh. um, but <laughs> you know what, we just got started. So I'm gonna hit my history and then back us up. Oh, okay, nice. And then always go let's, back, everyone. yeah, let's do that. Uh, I'm going to add a new layer, um, drag our mask over by holding control, control command, pulling it up. So now we have the same mask to work with nice. so that I can't, you know, draw outside the lines nice. and then back to the broad shapes. And I'm going to, I'm going to speed up a little bit because I see the time. Okay. Uh, nice. And nice. we have another light source to do here. So, but I do want to kind of massage this into place. Awesome. So you usually um, separate uh, your highlights and your shadows on separate layers? Honestly, no. I usually oh, okay. use one layer because I just like chaos. And, I was thinking and, like, wow, that's chaotic. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, for me, it's more about like, it feels more like painting and, and drawing. Like I will do, I will say this caveat. Um, if I know that I'm working, uh, like if I'm working with a client and I know that I'm gonna be revisiting this thing, I always separate everything out as much as possible. Sure. Um, but the, also the way that I start with my coloring, uh, the way I color things, uh, it's it's real lenient in the in the process of um, you know not having to have everything on a separate layer. Okay. Uh, I think that's a solid rule of thumb. It's just like, all right, who's going to see this and how many edits may this need in yeah. the future? Let yeah. me do myself a favor already for from the future. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do your do your future self a favor. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. All right, so kind of just picking and finding those places where this light would hit. Uh, honestly, I think a lot of this would be lit still. And then you have to remember to go back. See, that's the thing. You work in one layer. You don't have to remember to go back to another layer. You can just... Uh. I'm not going to advocate for that. I'll get run out of the room. <laughs> hey, I think what we've established during this stream is that you can work the way you want. And that's, that's cool. Right. That's right. <laughs> I, I definitely believe in that. That is a, if you get, if it gets the job done, mm -hmm. um, continue on. Now there can, there, you know, there's always something to be said for efficiency, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, if it, if efficiency hinders your workflow, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it really more efficient you know what i mean like if it, if you as you learn new tools everybody changes right so right um you eventually do pick up on things uh that like oh yeah that's why people use this sure oh, absolutely absolutely uh, but if you're chasing a deadline and there's a new way to do things you better believe you're going to do the way you know how to do it <laughs> without a doubt exactly <laughs> All right, so I think that's kind of good. Let's add this other light. Let's add this other light. Okay, right. So you said we're going to be doing multiple lighting sources. Got it. Yeah. So I'm going to make this. Uh, so we're going to call this rim light, I guess, because we're going to put this sort of behind. Okay. Uh, and this is probably the first one. Let's see. We're going to do. I'm going to tempt this cone. So this is facing it's kind of hard to see it this way because cones are weird when you start drawing them like this mm -hmm. but but we're not seeing the other side of this mm -hmm. so it's kind of just facing um slightly coming at us or coming towards us mm -hmm. i hope that reads well enough i think people get that get the yeah. idea of that yeah because what we're going to do is just try and catch just the side of this face, just the side, like we'll see it here in a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a new layer for that. Uh, I'm going to call this rim light. I think I did that for the cone, but that's okay. Uh, and then we're just going to, I'm going to come in here with my harsher shadow brush. Okay. Uh, and I may even go above this. Uh, above the sketch layer because so far i've been working uh, i'm going to drag our mask up here just so i stay in the lines okay. so now uh when i make these 
harsh light decisions, they will show like it's just catching the edge. It would be getting his ear as well, probably here. Again, thinking about this in 3D. Oh, and uh, just before I forget, working in 3D, if you're like, even if you're just messing around, it's really going to help your drawing skills so much. It uh, it blew my mind how how much uh, my drawing skills improved um, just based off of um, you know working several years in 3D. Uh, actually, I'm going to trash this mask. I know I said I wanted to use it, but I like <laughs> I like how this is working better without it. I love that embrace going outside the lines. That's awesome. Yes, indeed. <laughs> So now we have a little bit of a light coming on the side here. Uh, and, you know, it may even catch like the tip of the nose. You kind of just have to play with it to see where um, it probably wouldn't quite reach this way. I mean, it depends on how side and to the front it would be. Um, and again, the way you determine that, set up a light with a little sphere and then you can, you know, practice all day long. That's awesome. All right, um, what am I doing here? So now I'm just basically into rendering. Like that's that's where I would I would start trying to make this. You know, how far do I want to push this? Um, is it? Am I going to turn this into a painting or not? You know, that sort of thing. Ah, okay. So we've reached a. I guess this is a, another part of the the process when you're just like, okay, I'm pretty much. I know yeah, where the like, light and the shadow is, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to go a step further with that rendering idea. Exactly. I'm actually not digging the nose, so I think I might leave that off. Okay. But, but I'm going to hop back to our, I think this is our highlights, yeah, and give us a little bit of more light some of these areas. He doesn't really have any eyebrows, which I kind of find to be funny as well. I think that is part of what's making me like just feel so endeared to this character. Just something so funny about him, and he, he really playful. just wants. Yeah, he really just wants to be part of the conversation. You know, he's he's the like, hey, wait up, guys! Like that's <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's, the way it feels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, Val put in a good reminder. We have we're winding things down a little bit. Um, so if you have any uh, last minute questions for Wade, be sure to get them in. But this has just been so awesome and. Uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying myself. So I know everyone else has been as well. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Good to hear it. Uh, then I guess if it's that time where we're winding down, let's try, try to add some color to this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab all of these things. Um, mm -mm, let's see. Gonna add, yeah, I'm going to grab all of these and put them in their own group. Make sure I have everything I want. That works for me. Actually, I may drag this cone out. Is that layer four? Yeah. All right, so there's that. Um, and then I'm going to just come down here and add an adjustment layer. And where are you? Gradient map. There it is, down at the bottom. Okay. Oh, we're already, it's... Oh. it's it's not good. It's not good. So I'm clipping this. Okay. I'm going to clip this to the group. Immediately jump into here. Get rid of that. Okay. So the way the gradient maps work, and we don't, we're not going to have a lot of time to kind of like get into the nuance of it, but think of it as uh, from black to white. You can map the darker values of your image uh, based on your value. So if I want like a kind of a reddish... Uh, cool like a reddish light uh, sorry shadow um, to make that darker and then it's gonna work in scales of like uh, you're gonna have to let's say he has green skin I don't know I'm just kind of maybe this is Ryan's alien I don't know <laughs> right uh, okay. so uh, I'm gonna bump this to like a skin tone that I sort of like but this is the skin tone and not the light Right. Uh, and I, I normally would would uh, take the light. Uh, this is it's not going to make sense the way if I word it that way. Uh, I, I usually paint paint the light in, uh, so I can use any color I want. 
but I'm trying to just go for the base skin tone here. Uh, and then if I want to bump the light up, make that value, uh, you know, brighter like that. Oh, okay. And you can change that to any color you want, as long as the value uh, stays lighter. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if we give it like a kind of a warmish hue, uh, we'll do that. Click OK. And again, this is really rough, but this is a, this is the starting point of what I would do. Right. Um, and then from there, you can add a new layer. Sorry, I didn't mean to double tap that. I'm gonna pull my layers panel up a little bit. Maybe you can see it. Um, okay. Not sure why. There we go. Okay. Ah, okay. Um, here we go. New layer. And then I want to, yeah, it's still clipped. I'm gonna change this layer to color. So now we're working on the color uh, blend mode for this layer, but it's all clipped to this group. Uh, and now you can kind of just come in here and start grabbing um, Let me bring our colors back. Let's say I want the hair to be more of a blue. I don't know. Maybe a purple for, for Val. We got to do a purple for Val. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, and oh, I have to put it above the gradient map or it won't work. Okay, it's got to be uh, above the gradient. Yes, got it. yes. And now I'm just going to come in here, and all the color layer is going to do is use the same values, but change the hue. So now we're starting to get some of this purple. Wait a minute, are we doing like a nerdy Hulk? Is that what's happening here? This might open. <laughs> I hope. I hope. Marvel, don't come at me, please. <laughs> don't come after Wade. He's very, he's very good at what he does. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you want to come at me from that direction. Yeah. Feel free. With, come on. With, with the uh, with the skills he can he can help you guys <laughs> uh so maybe you want to add a little blush to this character so let's do a little bit of blush and really it's like makeup tutorial situation because i love it <laughs> honestly like i have watched makeup tutorials uh just to see how they do things like um and i'm kind of sidetracking here but just to see how they do things like you know if you want the light uh, the eye to kind of pop out you add a little highlight you know, in the corners. I've used that in paintings. Like, I'm like, I want this to really pop. So, you know, don't don't neglect any source that can help you is what I'm getting at here. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> so, and you can do things with the color too. Like, let's say maybe there's a five o'clock shadow. We want to, you know, maybe that's a gray. That's a little, it's a little purple, but you know, something like that. So you can use this blend mode in various ways. Uh, we're kind of making a clown face here, but let me get rid of this. <laughs> I do like to add red in, in the ears. Um, oh, on okay. the, uh, like it, I usually paint it with value. Um, like you'll see, see my ears a lot of times be really dark. Uh, it, like if you're seeing the value and it still indicates, oh, that's a deeper shade of skin tone. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like kind of adding that that touch um to most of my paintings anyway at least a little indication i mean every everything's uh depends on what subject i'm doing at the time but mm -hmm. if i'm just messing around you better believe there's gonna be some red ears and some red noses <laughs> that's awesome oh my god i'm so happy that we, we've been able to, to touch on color a little bit briefly too because i i feel like uh you had answered a question previously about why you do the things in your process and you leave mm -hmm. uh, color to like a later stage, just like establish your lighting, you know, first to make this stage um, yeah. easier. It makes uh, sense. You have dropped so much value during this stream, Wade, and I'm just, I've been so delighted um, to, to watch this process. And I know everyone is in the chat as well. Could you, as we're starting to wrap up now, give us just like a brief recap of where we've been today and um, where people Absolutely. can find you online and, and see more of your work. Oh boy, can I? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we started basically just showing a little bit of light demo um, and this weird blob ball thing showed up. I showed you how to kind of mess, mess around and make these techniques work for you so that you can use them in your portraits or anything, they apply to anything. It doesn't have to be just portraits. Uh, and then we had fun kind of uh, making uh, our portraits uh, with uh, specific lighting scenarios. 
Uh, and then uh, I give you guys some practice sketches that you can use those on, uh, use those techniques on. Uh, if you want to share those, you can uh, use my Instagram to at me, um, or you can just come and visit and say hi. Uh, any, everyone and anyone is welcome. Um, also, I do stream on Behance on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think I have a stream later today. So if you guys have any questions you didn't get to ask in this stream, feel free to hit me up during my personal stream later on. I think that's awesome. Make sure everyone you are following Wade, he is super talented and you don't want to miss out on the streams that he's going to be doing on his own Behance channel. So that's awesome. Um, everyone should also just stay tuned because we have a new episode of Art Battle. This week, you can watch DMT face off with artist Block Alley, aka Robotic Pastries, who makes comics and illustrations with Adobe Photoshop. So join the stream and vote on your favorite. Wade, this has been a, a lovely stream. Thank you so much for sharing your work and your talent with us. Thank you. Thank you. It's been awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Thank you to everyone in the chat and anyone who's catching the replay. And we will see you in future streams. Have a good one, everyone. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.